Okay, let's translate this sentence into a variable or algebraic expression. And that is the topic of this video. This is a critical skill in order to, um, uh, to be strong in algebra, especially when it comes to word problems. Because if you think about it in algebra, when you say, oh, we're dealing with a word problem. Okay, so here's a word problem. So what uh, is going on there? What do we have to work with? Well, we have words, right? <laughs> These are English words, and there's some sort of problem. So what we need to do is translate those words into an equivalent algebraic or variable expression. So this is really, really um, uh, important and typically taught in the beginning of most uh, algebra courses. So um, again, what we uh, are trying to do here is translate a verbal phrase. I'll put this over here. We're going to go from verbal to variable or algebraic. So that's the kind of the goal. But I do want to um, let you know as well that the translations that you need to understand aren't just from verbal uh, to variable. You can go the other way as well. You'll need to be able to take a mathematical expression and write that as a sentence. So very, very important stuff. And uh, I think this particular problem is not that difficult. It's kind of a warm-up problem. Obviously, there can be more uh, challenging problems. But let's just get you to understand the fundamentals here right now. But uh, the interesting thing about this is that we're dealing with languages. Okay, We're dealing uh, in this uh, particular problem, the English language, but we're going to the language of mathematics. Mathematics is in fact a language, okay? There's nouns, verbs, adjectives, all that kind of stuff. So if you think of math as a language and how you write it, okay? Imagine if you were going to write a story in English, you would have sentences and paragraphs, etc. So when you're solving a math problem, okay, and someone's supposed to read that like your teacher, you just don't want to be like, here is the beginning and here is the end, because your teacher would be like, I don't know what the story is, right? <laughs> you got to tell this story by being neat and structured, etc. So anyways, um, just kind of emphasizing that mathematics is, in fact, a real language. And we're going to get to this uh, uh, problem here in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that statement. You can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses. I have all the main courses like pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2. Uh, I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here very shortly. Uh, I'm pretty excited about that. But also I have a, a ton of specialty courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're preparing for a test like the GED, SAT, uh, ACT, GRE, GMAT, um, AccuPlacer, Alex, um, teacher certification, uh, nursing exam, uh, there's a ton of reasons why people are studying mathematics outside of a math course because there's a lot of math on these exams. And if you don't pass these exams, you know, uh, people don't reach their, their goals, whatever that might be. So... If you um, go to my website, you can, again, you can see that, uh, find the link in the description of the video. You can see my full catalog of uh, courses. If I don't have the, uh, your course, drop me a line and I'll give you, um, just go to the contact form, let me know what you're looking for, and I'll give you my best guidance. I also work with uh, independent um, learners like homeschoolers. I have a great homeschool learning program, so if that's you, you want to check out my program for sure. And then I obviously help those of you who are struggling and mathematics, maybe you're taking algebra right now in high school and you're struggling with this, it definitely can help you out. But uh, one thing that you need to be doing to help yourself out, no matter what your situation is, if you're watching this video, I assume you are interested in learning mathematics, you're uh, looking to get better at math. You need to make sure you're taking great math notes. Over decades of teaching math, one thing is apparent to me, those students who take great math notes almost always... Um, end up doing doing uh, doing very well, okay? They get excellent grades, and the reverse is true. Those students who are distracted in class, like I was back in the good old days in the 1980s, even without a cell phone, I managed to be distracted along with me and my friends, talking in class, doing things that we weren't supposed to be doing. Um, so I get it, you know, I know no one's perfect, but you have to really work hard to remain focused, especially uh, with all the uh, distractions from technology, okay? So the only way that that's really going to um, work in terms of staying focused is evidence of being focused, and that is taking fantastic math notes. If you're engaged and focused, you're going to have great notes, okay? You can't have great notes without having been uh, focused and engaged in class. So if you want uh, to kind of 
validate that you are, are in fact paying attention, doing all the right things, uh, your notes will tell the story. So most students need to, imp um, some of you need to, need to start taking any kind of notes right now, but uh, generally speaking, most people uh, can stand improvement in the area of note taking. But in the meantime, I actually offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so let's get into this uh, problem. Now, one thing I always kind of encourage uh, uh, students to do is to try to uh, pause the video and see if you can kind of figure it out. Now, there's different ways, well, uh, there's different variables you can use. So you could write this out in your way and still have an equivocal, uh, an equivalent correct answer uh, other than the way I'm going to do it, okay? But uh, let's go ahead and uh, go down here and talk about this. Okay, so this is not that difficult. So the first thing is, obviously, we want to read uh, the problem. So we got the sum of two different numbers. Okay, so the sum. So what are some key words here? So we have the sum. All right, the sum. That means something. And we have two. All right, so we have two. And then this word here, different. We have two different numbers, not the same numbers. Okay, and then obviously we have divided by. So that's going to be this by another number. Okay, so we have the sum of two different numbers divided by another number. All right, so let's just start here, right? Well, the sum is the result of adding something up. Well, we need to establish what we're going to add up. Well, what are we going to add up? Well, we're going to add up two different numbers. So in algebra, a variable like x just represents a number. Okay, that's all it represents. But if I wanted to um, be specific about, let's call this uh, a number, okay? Let's just say x is a number. If I want a different number, I wouldn't put x again. So I would put like y, right? So y could represent a different number. Now, technically they can be equal to one another, but here, I think this is kind of explicit that, hey, we're, we got one number and this is a different number, x and y. You could use A or B. It doesn't make a difference. What you don't want to do is use X and X because that is explicitly saying that you're dealing with the same numbers. We're talking about two different numbers. So we want to use two different uh, variables. So let's go ahead and use X and Y. You could use A and B or whatever uh, two variables you like as long as uh, they are different. Now, this word, the sum, means we're going to add them up. So let's go ahead and write this here, x plus y. Now, this is the sum of two different numbers, but I want you to um, reinforce this uh, thing I'm going to tell you right now. And maybe you want to take notes. It might not be a bad idea. Make sure you have these in your notes. This word, the sum, okay, if you have the sum or the difference, this is very, very important in algebra. Always use grouping symbols. Always use grouping symbols to put around any sum or difference. Okay, if you're subtracting two things or adding two things, put grouping symbols, parentheses, around that. Okay, that's a very explicit way of saying this is a sum. It's one kind of entity. So here I have the sum of two different numbers, but let's just make this more like this. Okay, we put grouping symbols around that. And this is not trivial, by the way. Uh, these parentheses will um, really come in handy in terms of reducing errors later down in algebra, especially when you're dealing with things like the distributive property, etc. Just blame me on this one. If you see this word, the sum or the difference of two different numbers, use uh, grouping symbols, parentheses. Now, there are other grouping symbols like this, x plus y, and uh, these are technically uh, the same thing. I can use these squiggly brackets like that, but uh, these are not um, uh, really, let's say, your first choice. So anytime you're using grouping symbols, just use parentheses, not brackets, or squiggly brackets. Okay, so uh, the sum of two different numbers, this is what you want right there. Okay, again, it could be uh, another set of variables as long as they are different variables. Now, divided by, all right, well, that should be pretty easy. Now, you could, uh, let me go ahead and just erase this. A couple of different ways you can go about this. And this is what I'm trying to say. Uh, if you were taking this quiz with me and you turned in your problem, you could write this this way. X plus Y. We have the sum of two different numbers. Let me erase this here. I'll show you some options. Okay. Uh, 
ways that you could kind of express this that I think would be okay. So we have the sum, okay, of two different numbers divided by another number. Now, what do you think this uh, another number is going to be? Well, if I used x and y for my uh, uh, numbers, my two different numbers, another number, don't you think we should use another variable? Maybe let's call it z, okay? Don't use, uh, a nut, you know, one of these variables. Use a an explicitly different variable. So you can call it z, or you can use a, b, c. Again, doesn't make a difference as long as they are different. Now, divided by another number, you could write it this way, divided by another number. So that's okay, that's equivalent. Or this way, the sum of two different numbers divided by another number. I actually would prefer uh, this way, but if you wrote it this way, that is fine as well. Okay, so if you, in fact, understood this and you were able to do this on your own, I certainly uh, would suggest giving yourself a smiley face, an A plus and a 100%. And because this problem wasn't so hard, just give yourself, let's say, two stars, right? It's not a five-star problem. A five-star problem is like one of those really super hard problems. But here's the deal. If you understand that, understand this, okay, especially with the grouping symbols, all right, and the use of three unique variables, then you're definitely well on your way to a lot of happy faces, and A plus isn't 100% in algebra, and that's the whole point of watching this video. Remember, again, okay, mathematics is a language, okay? The way you write that language, okay, counts. It, it counts to your teacher, it counts to you, and the way you practice writing mathematics correctly is uh, how you write notes, okay? When you're taking math notes, what are you writing down? Well, the majority of things you're writing down are like example problems that your teacher is solving, uh, you know, and you want to model that structure. You, that's what you want to be doing. OK, uh, and when you do math, like your homework uh, or et cetera, whatever you're doing, if you practice math poorly, you're going to be poor in math. OK, it's just like if you want to be a great writer, you wouldn't just, you know, uh, write scribbly scratch and, you know, uh, disorganized, um, you know, words on a uh, paper. OK, math is no different. It is, in fact, a language. OK, so. If this video helped you out in some way, if you liked it, please consider smashing that like button. It helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. Been on YouTube for a long time, 10 plus years. I have hundreds and hundreds of videos, well, probably over a thousand uh, easily uh, by now on my channel, organized uh, from basic to advanced mathematics. So you can check that out. But my best uh, math help will be uh, found in my math program. Again, you can find all, all those links in the description of this video. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.